Last time, we learned about vertical hyperbolas. In this lesson, we will learn about the significance of the focal points, the foci, of a hyperbola, and compare and contrast the formulas and characteristics of ellipses and hyperbolas. A hyperbola can be thought of as a set of points such that the difference of the distances from every point in the hyperbola to two focal points is constant. What does this mean? It means that look at the point on the hyperbola and the two distances, the red distance and the blue distance from the two focal points to the point, when you subtract them, the difference will always be the same. And you can see the animation uh, as follows. No matter how big those two lines are, they will always subtract to get the same amount, the orange part. And we call the distance from the center to a focus C. Now, how big is that constant part? There's a very nice result that if we take the constant part, look at the orange part, the orange line, and we move it, it's going to be exactly the distance between the two vertices of the hyperbola, not the foci, the vertices. And here's another bigger drawing that shows this basic difference. Um, B, in this case, because it's a vertical hyperbola, is the difference, is the distance from the center to the vertex. And the constant difference is therefore going to be 2B in this case. If it was a horizontal hyperbola, the constant difference would have been 2A. Here's a task because we have these three letters, A, B, and C. Using this picture and using the circle that I drew for you in this case, can you make a conjecture as to the relationship between A, B, and C? Try it out, think about it. This is a very informal exercise, but see if you can find a relationship just from this picture. Okay, so if you can truly form that green circle for every hyperbola, then the radius of this circle is C, and this um, green line is also going to be C. And as a result, th there's a right triangle that's formed in which a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So it certainly seems like the relationship is going to be a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, and we have to find out really whether that fully holds. And so here's task two. Using this definition of a hyperbola and the picture below, write an equation of a hyperbola using the distance formula. And again, that definition is a hyperbola is a set of points such that the difference of the distances from each point to two focal points is constant. Try it out. So all we really need to do is use the distance formula. The blue distance is the distance from point x, y to c0, and the red part of the formula is the distance from x, y to negative c0, and the difference of those distances is constant, or d. And because we know that that, diff that distance, d, that common difference, uh, between the two distances is equal to 2a, the distance between the vertices of a hyperbola. We could write it like this. And from this point, and this is for a horizontal hyper, uh, hyperbola, for a vertical it would be 2b. But from this point, if you did a lot of algebra, very similar to how we did it for an ellipse in lesson number seven, you will get the equation eventually x squared over a squared minus y squared over c squared minus a squared is equal to 1. And this is a hyperbola that uses a and c, the distance from the center to the vertex and the distance from the center to the focus, to define a hyperbola. We also have a definition of a hyperbola that relies on a and b, where a again is the distance from the center to the vertex, and b is the other value that determines the slope of the asymptotes. And because these refer to the same hyperbola, we can therefore say that our conjecture was correct, that c squared minus a squared is equal to b squared, and therefore c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. That those two red portions, those two highlighted portions are equal, implies that you have c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. Now that we found out how c relates to a and b, it's a good time to ask how does eccentricity fit into this picture? The eccentricity of a hyperbola is greater than one, and we can see this using the same two definitions 
of eccentricity that we used for ellipses. The first is that eccentricity can be thought of as the distance from the point of the focus over the distance from the point of the directrix. And by looking at the animation, you can see that the distance from the point of the focus is twice the distance of the point to the directrix. In other words, the eccentricity is two. And using a very, using really the same proof as in lesson number eight, we can show that that also implies that eccentricity is again C over A or C over B. And because C is the largest value of those three values, A, B, and C in a hyperbola, that's another way of showing that the eccentricity of a hyperbola is greater than one. Okay, so here's the master plan of how all these things relate to each other. There's a general idea of what a transverse axis, axis is. The transverse axis is the axis where focal points appear. And it also by definition is the uh, axis where vertices appear. So we call in an ellipse, the vertices are the endpoints of the transverse axis. And the transverse axis in, a, in an ellipse is determined by the relative size of A and B. That if A is bigger than B, the transverse axis is horizontal and it's a horizontal ellipse. And if B is bigger than A, then the transverse axis is going to be vertical and there'll be a vertical ellipse. For hyperbolas though, whether it's horizontal or vertical and whether the transverse axis is horizontal and vertical does not depend on the sizes of A and B, but rather on their order. So if the X term comes first in the formula, then it's going to be a horizontal hyperbola and the, the transverse axis here in light pink is going to be uh, horizontal. So a few things. Whenever it's a horizontal shape, meaning the transverse axis is horizontal, the foci appear on the horizontal axis, then the eccentricity is gonna be given by C over A in our way of thinking about it. And whenever it's a vertical shape, where the, the foci appear on the vertical axis, the eccentricity is gonna be C over B. Secondly, um, A squared plus B squared, A squared equals B squared plus C squared is going to be the formula for the horizontal. B squared is equal to A squared, sorry, the horizontal ellipse. B squared is equal to A squared plus C squared is gonna be for the vertical ellipse. And because C is bigger than A or B in a hyperbola, then for all hyperbolas, regardless of orientation, C squared is gonna be equal to A squared plus B squared. And we have all three variants of this very Pythagorean-like relationship. So you can go back to this slide to study these interrelationships, but to end this lesson, I'm going to give you a few quick questions to see if you have internalized these ideas. Quick question set number one. Is X squared over four plus Y squared over five equals one a horizontal or vertical ellipse? And it's an ellipse because of the plus. What are the coordinates of the center? What are the coordinates of the foci? What is the eccentricity? So take a couple of uh, seconds or minutes and pause the video if you uh, want some more time to think about these questions. All right, so first thing is to always identify the A squared and the B squared. And in our treatment, the A squared is always the horizontal one under X and the B squared is always the vertical a component under Y. So the B squared is bigger, and in an ellipse, it's the bigger one that determines the orientation of the ellipse and what the transverse axis is. So because B is bigger than A, this will be a vertical ellipse. It's the sizes in an ellipse that matter. And the center is zero, zero. Now for a vertical ellipse, B is the biggest dimension. So B squared is equal to A squared plus C squared. And we plug in five is B squared and four is A squared. We solve for C, we get one. And then, so the foci will, will appear at zero one and zero negative one. And that's because the transverse axis is vertical. So they will um, be have different Y values, therefore. And the eccentricity is C over B because it's a vertical ellipse. And C is one and B is the square root of five. Remember five is B squared and that's about 0 0.45. And recall that the uh, eccentricity of an ellipse is less than one. And so that checks out with that uh, theory. Here's quick question set number two. Is y squared over four minus x squared over five equals one a horizontal or a vertical hyperbola? And it's a hyperbola because of the minus there. What are the coordinates of the center? What are the coordinates of the foci? What is the eccentricity?
All right, so we're going to go over it. Because the y squared term comes first, and not because of the sizes of 4 versus 5, that's how we know it's going to be a vertical hyperbola. Okay, So the vertical hyperbola has uh, the y come first in the formula. The x term is subtracted from the y term. And it doesn't matter that b squared is bigger, or sorry, that a squared is bigger. The size of a and b have nothing to do with the orientation of a hyperbola. So the center is again going to be 0, 0. And in any hyperbola, c is the biggest value. So the equation linking a, b, and c is going to be c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. And then you plug in a squared and b squared to get c is 3, ultimately. c squared is 9, c is 3. And because this is vertical, the transverse axis is vertical, which means that 3 up, or c up and down, which in this case is 3 up and down, from the center will be the foci. 0, 3, and 0, negative 3. The eccentricity, however, does change in our uh, way of notating this depending on the orientation. Because this is vertical, it'll be c over b, which is 3 over 2, which is equal to 1.5, which is good because in our theory, hyperbolas have an eccentricity, not just our theory, but all theories of this stuff. The eccentricity uh, of a hyperbola is greater than 1. So at this point, we've learned about many different perspectives to describe hyperbolas, parabolas, and ellipses. And we're going to continue developing new perspectives, such as whatever happened to the whole conic section part of conic sections. How do these relate to cones? We're going to discuss intersections. There are a lot of other issues to discuss, but until then, have a great day.